Good morning, good afternoon everyone, and welcome to this Unity tutorial on how to do visual debugging or editing using Gizmos. In this episode, we're going to talk about tooling, and we'll see how to create our own custom GUI elements and interactors in the scene view using Unity Editor Package. Are you ready? Then let's dive in! So, game dev is a very broad topic, and apart from making the scripts that actually run the game itself, another important part of the process is making sure that you and your teammates have the right tools to develop this game. That's the focus of a subfield of game dev called tooling. It is dedicated to providing the devs, designers, and artists with additional data about the game, either in-game or in the editor, to make it easier and quicker to debug, analyze, and improve the project settings. This info is not always shipped with the build game. It can be hidden, and it may not always be very pretty, but it gives you more readable data to work on to better understand how the game you're coding works. So today, I want to show you how Unity's built-in editor features allow us to create our own visualizers and inspectors, to better debug our project and tweak its settings. To begin with, let's see how to create some basic gizmos in our scene view. Gizmos are those little shapes and visual aids that you can draw in your scene view to help with debugging, so you have some for the camera or the lights by default, and you can actually create your own using the Andro gizmos or Andro gizmos selected functions. So let's just add a little script in our project called gizmos example, and we'll put it on an empty game object in the middle of our scene. And now let's open the script in Visual Studio and just clear everything that's inside, because instead we want to use the onDraw gizmos method. Okay, so in this function, we can use the gizmos module to create various shapes in our scene. Uh, here, if I look at the autocomplete that Visual Studio offers, I see that I can create a cube, a line, a sphere, and lots of other stuff. Um, let's start with the basic cube. So gizmos.drawcube requires two parameters, the position to create the gizmo at, and the size of the cube to show. I'll just start with the basic world origin position, so that's vector3.0 and then a normalized scale of vector3.1. If I save my script and go back to Unity, once it's done recompiling, you see that a little cube pops in the scene. And once again, I haven't run the game, uh, there is no game to run, it's not playing or anything. Um, the gizmos are shown in edit mode, in your scene view, that makes it really easy and quick to debug things without having to wait for everything to start and avoiding lots of uh, dependencies issues. I don't have to make sure that all your scripts work for your scene to run. Uh, you can just work on a very small part of your logic and only show the objects that are integrated in this logic. It's also important to note that those gizmos are not actual 3D objects in your scene, uh, they're just drawn on top of it. So, for example, if I take my debugger object and move it around, the position of the cube won't change. That's because we told the script to draw it at the world origin, and it only has this info to work on. So it's not like parenting stuff to an object. Um, the gizmos are always drawn at the positions you give them in your c -sharp script. But yeah, so we created this pseudo object uh, with just one line of code in one specific function. So you can already see the power of this debugging system. It's really quick to code and to test, and it has most of the things that you will need um, ready-made and already accessible. Uh, we can actually jump back into our code and try to create a little sphere this time. Again, we can use uh, gizmos.draw, um, but here we want draw sphere, and we just have to pass it a position and a radius. And I'm actually going to offset both the sphere and the cube a bit from the origin point so they don't collide with each other, and I'll shrink them down to uh, better separate them visually. So if I save this and go back to Unity, you see that I now have a little sphere on the right of my cube. So that's really cool. 
But something that can be nice uh, for debugging is to have some colors to better differentiate your gizmos uh, because here everything is white and if I have lots of those it could be a bit cumbersome to distinguish uh, between the different debuggers. This is really easy to do in our script. Uh, we just need to assign the gizmos.color variable to a given color. I'll go for a basic um, four red tint. And now if I save this, you see that my sphere has turned red. Uh, but you have to be careful though, from that point on, everything you draw in your Android gizmos function uh, with the gizmos module will use the same uh, red color. So for example, if I just duplicate my draw sphere and offset it a bit to have a third object, uh, you see that I do have three objects. So I have my cube and my two spheres, but the two spheres are red. So if I want to go back to white or if I want to use another color, I have to explicitly set the value of gizmos.color again. And this will be the new standard for all the upcoming gizmos. Now, another important thing with Android Gizmos is that uh, it is interactive. Uh, just like the update method in a usual Unity C Sharp Mono behavior script, it's going to be called again and again by the engine every frame. So we can actually make our debugger dynamic and react to changes. Let's see how this works by adding a little parameter to a script, a simple float variable called cube size. We'll also add a custom attribute to this field to show it as a range between zero and one. So this way we will get a little slider in the inspector instead of a basic input field. And in our Android Gizmos method, we can simply use this value um, as we would usually in our draw cube call to set the size of the gizmo in the scene. Now, if I save this and go back to Unity, you see that I have a new variable in the inspector of my debugger object that shows a slider from zero to one. And if I change this value, my cube just scales up and down accordingly and instantly. But if you want to build more advanced visual debuggers, chances are that those gizmos will soon limit you too much. So if cubes and spheres are not your cup of tea, you can dive into Unity's editor handles and get even more crazy debuggers. To access those objects, we just have to import another package in our script, the Unity editor package. And this package contains various utilities for editor tooling, uh, like the handles or some base classes to make your own custom editors. We'll talk about this in a sec. So now that we have this package imported, if I try and type in handles, you see that the autocomplete offers quite a lot of choice. Uh, for example, we can draw a very basic circle using the disk utility. So we just pass it a rotation, uh, go with the usual quaternion.identity uh, position. So I'll go with the world origin point and a few other options like the size. And so now we get a little white circle in our scene. If we want to change the color of our debugger, it's just like with the gizmos, except that we need to set the handles.color property and not the gizmos.color. But of course, we can even show uh, more complex geometries, uh, for example, a nice Bezier curve. So suppose we have four points that we store in a public array like this. Those are transforms. And we can actually combine gizmos and handles to first display a little cube at the position of each point and then draw the Bezier curve that goes through these points. So if I go back into Unity, for now, I'll get some errors in the console because I haven't assigned my point yet. So let's just create four empty objects, rename them properly, and then drag them to the inspector of my debugger object. And you see that once the four slots have been filled, a little cubes pop in the middle of the screen. And now if I drag the objects around, the debug gizmo, so the cube, will follow, and the Bezier curve will eventually show up. I can just move the points around to change the shape of the curve and I see that it automatically refreshes. Pretty cool, right? Okay, now that we know how the gizmo system works, let's actually use this to make uh, some of our data more easily editable. We'll take a very common example in game dev, which is debugging and setting a value on a character manager. 
Let's say we have a little buddy in our scene, that's our hero avatar, shown as a capsule, and a bunch of enemies around it, so those are the little blue cylinders. We want to set how large the field of view of the hero is, so basically we want to tweak its uh, FOV value so that it feels right in the scene. The problem is that for now, uh, it's just about guessing randomly what the best value could be. We don't have any visual cues for what the right amount may be. And in my opinion, it can be quite hard to intuitively get the scale of things in Unity. Uh, but what if we could modify this FOV visually? Uh, what if we had a little handle we could drag around to set the FOV value? Then we could easily visualize it and ensure that our FOV property is indeed set to a valid and relevant value. Uh, well, we can actually solve this issue using gizmo handles and some custom editors. So first, let's make a very simple class to represent our hero. This is the hero manager. This script uh, is the data we want to display and it will just contain one public field, the FOV value that we want to manipulate. So I'll just add this to my hero object. And of course, I have my field displayed in the inspector automatically. Uh, that's thanks to Unity. And I can tweak it here, but that's not what we want. So the next thing we need to do is create a custom editor for our hero manager class. And this will be a special type of Unity script. It will be an editor script. So it's not used in game, but by the Unity editor itself to modify and improve the way some data is displayed in the inspectors, windows, and scene view. So something crucial is that all editor related scripts have to be placed in a specific folder in your project. You have to create an editor folder at the root of your assets and place your script inside it. Otherwise, it won't work. The Unity editor will simply ignore it. Note, however, that your script can be in subfolders inside this editor folder if you want. Uh, but the important thing is that it is in this editor sub hierarchy. Okay, so I'll just create a hero debugger script and open it in Visual Studio. And let's clear everything in our brand new script and change its parent class from mono behavior to editor. This will tell Unity that um, our script should be used by the editor instead of the running game. But for this class to be available, uh, once again, we have to import the Unity editor package. And before coding the class itself though, uh, we need to tell it what type of object it will be working on. So which data type it is an editor for. This is done by adding a little custom editor attribute above the class and passing it the type to edit. So in our case, that's the hero manager. And this time uh, the function we'll define is the on scene UI function. So we're no longer drawing um, gizmos. We'll be using the on scene UI function because it is called when the scene view is rendered to optionally show some additional user-defined GUI elements or even do some mesh editing. But we can still use the same editor utilities. So for example, we can set the color of our handles, um, of uh, the GUI and so on. And we can even draw a little circle at the origin point with a given radius like this. So this will be our FOV display. But of course, we don't want it to be drawn at the origin point. Um, we want it to follow the character object and we want its radius to depend on the current value of the FOV field in our hero manager class instance. So first we need to get a reference to our hero manager object. So the object that the editor is currently editing and Unity actually provides us with a reference to this object via the inherited variable called target. But this variable is of object type. So that's the lazy C sharp type that can stand in for anything and then be converted back to your original data type using unboxing. Here we need to transform it to a hero manager variable by casting it explicitly. And so now we can actually access the hero position and its current FOV value. Let's first get this position and use it in our draw wire disk call. 
along with the transform up vector and the FOV value for the radius. We can even improve our debugging tool by also showing the FOV value with a small text handle that is placed a bit outside the circle. And here I'm just using the toString optional parameter to specify the format I want for my string. In this case, I want floats with just one decimal. And so if I save this and go back to Unity, you see that I now have an orange circle and label around my hero object that shows the current FOV value of the hero manager that is on this object. And if I move my hero object, the gizmo follows along because uh, its position depends on the position of the object the editor is targeting. And similarly, if I change the value of the FOV in the inspector, I just see that the gizmos update directly and show us the new FOV radius. That's already quite good. But there is one last thing we can do to make it even nicer to use. And that's to actually add a little handle on the circle to modify the FOV value without having to go all the way to the inspector on the right. So Unity's handles package has one uh, specifically designed for that. That's the scale value handle. And it basically displays a little gizmo that you can drag around to update a single float value. It takes in a bunch of parameters like the current value of uh, the variable it's connected to, the position, the orientation, the scale, and so on. Um, but just like some GUI elements, it returns a value. Namely, it returns the new value for the float variable that it's watching. So we can simply reassign this updated value to the FOV field of our hero manager. Uh, so that's uh, the hero manager target instance that we're editing. And this will basically connect the handle to the variable. So now back into Unity, if I grab this arrow on the edge of the circle and drag it inwards or outwards, you see that it modifies the FOV parameter of my hero and the gizmos update. So we see that the label changes and the value updates in the inspector on the right. So everything is properly connected. And I now have a user-friendly tool to set my FOV value that is way more convenient than a simple input field in the inspector. It's really quick to code, but it can make a huge difference in designing and optimizing your game because it gives you immediate feedback and makes the info overall more readable. So this can be particularly useful if you work with some game designers in your team that really prefer visual tools. And in general, tooling can be a bit weird, but it may be quite rewarding to do. And so it's worth diving into from time to time and see if you can make uh, handy debuggers and visualizers for your project to help you and your team. Just a final note, um, the Andro Gizmo selected function that I talked about earlier is just like the Andro Gizmos, except that it will only show if you select the object um, that has the script with this method attached on it. So if you have a bunch of objects in your scene and the visual is starting to get a bit crowded, it might be better to only show info about the currently inspected, so the currently selected object. And so basically you just replace the Andro Gizmos with Andro Gizmos selected. And this way, it will only populate your scene view with the gizmos if you select your object. That's it for today, folks. In this episode, we saw how to do some quick tooling in Unity. We saw how to use the gizmos and scene UI to display or even interact with data in our objects. And we made a user-friendly visual debugger and custom editor for a basic float field. If you want to see a bit more advanced editor customization, you can take a look at the GitHub repository where I share a script that allows you to pick the variable you want to debug and tweak it with your scene gizmos. Don't hesitate to post comments with your ideas on how to improve and experiment with this feature. And in the meantime, feel free to like and share this video or to subscribe to my channel so you know as soon as new videos come out. Thanks for watching and take care.